lounging, son. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan. And I'm Manny. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about X-Men Grand Design, book two, second Genesis. And sad to say this, when I said it last time, somebody called it out, but the late, great uh, Ed Piscor. Um, better late than never. We've been wanting to talk about this. We talked about it in the in book one. When we reviewed it. We had planned to do these and we just, for whatever reason, kept like not doing it. So I'm really glad that we decided to do it now. Kind of keep Ed's name out there in a positive light. Talk about his work. Um, before I get into it, though, I just want to re remind everybody, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, check out some of the old video uh, content on the channel. There's some great playlists, great, great books that we've gone through and including, like I said, uh, book one of this. So go hit that subscribe button. And now let's talk to X-Men Grand Design. I love these end papers. Uh, yeah, man, they're sick. He did it with uh, all the corner boxes. And then this one. It, I feel like it's only the issues that it talks about in this one. So, like last time, it was um, corner boxes that far exceeded the issues that were covered because you could tell right. by the eras. But here, I feel like it's only the comic books. So, it's like at top of it is 94 and it goes to 150. A lot of shit happened in these issues because there's this is like the, the new era of X Men. This is the Claremont, Burn, Cockrum, all that good stuff, dude. Yeah, man, the heavy sci-fi period where you've got, like, you know, the Sheer Empire coming in heavy. You've got, like, uh, all the Phoenix stuff going on, the Hellfire Club. Like, yeah, so Paul, this is when, when, when Claremont right was, too. yeah, when Claremont was, like, juggling, like, those infamous, like, year-long story arcs and subplots and, you know, like, the real soap opera storytelling yeah. that the book was known for. Again with these, what the fucking credits, dude? I, I mean, Amazing. it's just, it's so, like, it's such an interesting way to present it. And I talked about it last time. And I'm going to talk about this time. And I'm going to talk about it when we do book three. His design, the eye for design he has, dude. It's not, it's fucking yeah. stupid. It's like something I don't think I hear people talk enough about. They talk about his cartooning and stuff and his writing. They don't really mention it as much. I feel like Jim Rugg, it gets mentioned a lot. But I think it's important to note that Ed was like, had also a really good eye for design. Yeah, and it's a different skill set, man. You know, like, just because you're a great cartoonist doesn't mean you have an eye for design. It's like, no. I feel like that's a different part of your brain you're using. It's a different sort of, like, set of artistic skills, and and uh, he had both. Yeah, and I think, you know, not to, not to uh, talk shit, but, like, I feel like some people just, like, that part of it, it's like they don't even, like, necessarily want to do. It's not a, it's not like maybe they're not having as much fun, but you can tell when you look at these that Ed yeah. is enjoying it because they're dope and they and they're not just generic this could very well be a just a black or a solid color with just the credits it yeah have it could to be an illustration that he did special for this no man but it adds to the overall package and like you know ha having you know watched cartoonist cape for years and like been friendly with ed like i know how much he loves the the, the total package of an item like the, the book as a as a, a physical object itself you know and yeah he, He's thinking about that too. I think when he's creating is like the tactile things you're gonna you're gonna feel and see when you're holding it in your hand. You know, it's part of what makes a book so special of a reading experience. Oh yeah. And then I love for this one, we don't get a lot of back matter, but he added in some pinups that he recolored. So we get this yes. fucking sick Jim Lee piece. Dope as fuck, bro. You know, I love I love Jim Lee's X-Men. Uh you know, that I came in to X-Men sort of around that time. Same. So it's same since it's a real nostalgic. And I love that it's this era of X-Men with these costumes, you know, like like the, you know, you got like the Marvel girl, like, you know, like the sexy outfit. You got that classic Cyclops. I love that beast, you know. Just yeah. great overall, man. Oh yeah. And then this this iconic fucking uh pinup. I forgot what it's I know that it was used on an X-Men classic cover, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that was right. Arthur Adams, right? Yeah, th yeah, this is Art Adams, dude. This is fantastic too. I just love that I love the way he recolors these things. And yes. then on this like this beige color paper that he did. That's so good. Yes. Plus these books smell really well. I, yes, I they do, it man. Sounds, it sounds weird. No, 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 dude. You're but talking they, to the right guy about that. But they fucking smell really good, dude. The paper fucking suck. I don't know. It's besides newsprint, these treasury books that they did for the X Men Grand Design and all the Grand Design fucking just have a, an amazing smell to them. It's I, I say it and I can't stop laughing about it, but it's fucking true. Um, and I love how you know we get the new team. We get we see the Hellfire Club spying on them. 
because they play yep. a huge factor um in this you know this saga that claremont is working on that's going to lead us through the dark phoenix saga and and it's also kind of like what we've been dealing with all in book one where it was like this looming threat that they thought was coming for professor xavier and then we're yeah. gonna find out that that's not the case and we meet the new team the the original x-men they went to krakoa we get the introduction of the new team because scott comes back and he has lost the rest of his teammates so we get banshee we get storm i love this panel of storm by the way that's a great angle and i love, I that love the night the night call is dope but i love that colossus is painting yeah that's and so his cool. modern art he's like a modern art painter i like that kind of minimalistic <laughs> modern art he's doing well wolverine who we've technically already met uh yeah because of the way that ed's like redoing like the cohesiveness of the history but this yeah. is the first time he was actually introduced within the x-men pages was during trying size x-men but it's cool it's cool to get to see all the team come together i love this panel too with fucking oh with the vines yeah, i love dude. that one man so good like just the detail on on the on the plants is amazing just like the you know, the way Havoc is forming an X, you know, again, like the great sense of design that, that he has. Like he's thinking about not just the storytelling, but how the page is going to look. And it's funny, too, because like now, you know, it's 2024. So the X-Men Krakoa age has happened. So Krakoa yeah. has now come to mean something so different than what yeah. it was introduced as. And so we see like, you know, Scott, you know, they save them. Gene's like, dude, you were used as bait. And then we see that Kakoa is a living island that is now attacking them. And now we also know that it's a mutant. Like they've yeah. changed the history with that too. But this is such a that, great uh, homage to, it feels like a uh, Fantastic Four number one with Mole Man. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, it, it's, it is. It, I think it's a direct homage. I can see and that. I love that panel of Kakoa like going off into space. I also like the lack of uh, background. Like there's there's no panel here. Which yeah. I think is kind of cool. Like it's li it's just uh, sunspot, or I mean, uh, uh, sunfire, and he's flying with the ship, and the, and then the word balloon, and then you have the the box. But because of the color of the paper, it's still it feels like it's it becomes a panel, and you do it right here too with this explosion down here. Oh yeah, it's great, man. Yeah. Here he goes using that white, dude. I love the way like like look at the the way the blue background is. It doesn't have that like. Um, the the way he colors it that uh like the four color process type of thing yeah they did. it doesn't have those like is it ben gay dots is that what it's called yeah so it doesn't have that effect right here which i think is kind of interesting that he makes it pop out it this whole project that he does has a real pop art vibe yes to it, which i've heard people say that he was a fan of like andy warhol which makes me think like is that a little bit part of it you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i know he did that photo shoot that was kind of like andy warhol I could be grasping at straws here. I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to make sense of it, but it's really dope. I you just the depths of Thunderbird. I'll tell you what, this made me want to go through some of the old uh, Claremont burn issues if you're ever down. I'm thinking we should. Oh, I'm down, dude. I, I always have uh, any reason to revisit those is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm thinking we should do D Days of Future Past. That's, that's, that's I have... not talked about in this one. I think that's the next one. We should definitely do that. I have those uh, facsimiles, so. That'll be fun to do, but th like that's that's the great thing about this is that I haven't read all the uh, the issues. And we talked about it before, and Ed presents it in such a way that it's like it feels fresh. It, it feels fresh, but then it also makes you intrigued enough to want to go back and read those old comics. You know, like yeah. to find out more. Like because Ed, obviously, you can only put so many. I mean, you're condensing like thirty years into three books, three eighty page books. Yeah, he's so, streamlining everything. Yeah. And it's crazy that it all fits like a, like it's just one continuous issue. Like each each chapter in here, which is two issues that it collects, feels like a, a feels like a good single issue. It doesn't feel yeah. like it's jumbled or it's like a collage of different things. Little thing right here, this tree, lit up tree. I I really dig the way he did that. I have the uh, I have this on digital also, and I can like tap the panels and zoom in, and it's that's actually oh. really incredible too when you do that. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't I guess that's the like one cool thing about digital is that you can like zoom in. Yeah. Uh, you can only zoom in so much with your actual with your actual yeah. face. And this again is there's a lot I I I know more about this era but there's still a lot I don't know. And this is, you know, this is crazy. This is like what we're seeing when 
you know, Gene is about to become Phoenix. I, this yeah. scene right here, horrifying, dude, fucking crazy, dude. Like that is straight. Like if you just looked at these panels, you think this is like a fucking horror story. The the writing on here is so good too. Is like she is stricken blind almost immediately. Then her humors boil and evaporate. Gene's cells begin to divide at a rapid play pace. Her atoms split, yet she doesn't waver in her mission. Like it's really poetic, you know. Oh, dude, his writing is. Again, I think most people talk. It's to me, it's like his art and then his writing is what people talk about. But his writing is really good in here, and also like his scene. his ability to research. I think is like insane. yeah, yeah. That that's that's a, a thing that a lot of people overlook, and like you know, immersing yourself in the subject that you're creating is only gonna make your what the the thing you're creating that much more like like better. And he was great at that. Like really, really diving headlong and research just something i admire and it's something i do like yeah. that obsessiveness with something you know to find out as much as you can it's, about it it's also like to think like oh what are you doing what are you doing oh, i gotta research oh really we're doing i'm researching excellent i gotta go read a bunch of comics like that's also not like the worst thing to have to do <laughs> yeah you know? yeah so like when when jim too was talking about like having to go or going and reading old hulk stuff i was like Man, what a fucking what a job to be to get paid to go read a bunch of old comics like that's fucking yeah. That's and Marvel amazing. giving you access like here you go, here's the entirety of the Hulk run. Yeah, uh, you know you have a, a year to read it. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then this dude, I think I love this too. This the Phoenix Force coming in. We see these sequence of panels much like before. So she was killed, but now reborn. And then yeah. she's like a she's adult, but then she shrinks back into a fetus or in, yeah, yeah. To a fetus. it's pretty crazy, dude. You know they're all they're all crashing the water, and then we see this sick ass panel, dude. Like I kind of want, I kind of want a bookmark of this. I wouldn't. Yeah, mind. dude, that's sick. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, pretty crazy, dude. And more of the Shire is, is more involved in all this now. Everything like is has been building to this, and I I think yeah. it's just fucking crazy. This right here too is fucking dope with Black Tom and and Juggernaut getting chucked out by Storm. Love the way he draws these spaceships. I know his. It, he doesn't like. He fucking puts in like such a great level of detail. He doesn't over render. He knows when to like pull back and when to like, mm-hmm. um, you know, go full force. Like something like this. You know, like look how. I mean, I don't know what size he draws at, but that's still like even if he's drawing at a uh, eleven by seventeen, that's still pretty tiny. And look at the level of detail yeah. he puts in that. I think he might have drawn that. a little bit bigger than eleven by seventeen. I think so too. This would make a good artist edition. Yeah, you know, I love this too. I love the dude. I I keep saying it, but I can't say it enough. The way he utilizes white, like utilizing it for this portal, the way it breaks that panel so perfectly. I don't. It's just there's something about it, dude. It's so strange. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was talking about it with Adam Lemna, who uh, you know, who you know, I'm working on Relic Hunter with him, and uh, he was watching our videos, and he was like, I uh, he wants to start. He's like, I want to start using white as a color, and I'm like. Not a lot of people do, and it's kind of a brilliant move, you know? Like, yeah. But really, the like only the way ad- it works is if you have an off-color background. Because you couldn't just, yes. like, if this was white, it, would, it wouldn't it would It wouldn't work. work, yeah, correct, yeah. But this is amazing, dude. Like, now we get the Star Jammers, who I've kind of become a fan of quite a bit. I, I think I learned, I think I became a fan when Ed Brubaker was writing this, uh, he wrote this uh, year-long storyline. With um, Vulcan, who becomes like one of the, or he's the third Summers brother. That was a dangling Claremont plot thread that he took over. Yeah, which by the way, that would be great to talk about. That is like nobody talks about that. You know, that's kind of a blind spot for me, and it would give me a reason to read it. You've never read that Brubaker. So then, like, look at this. Talk about utilizing white. It's just a solid page of white, dude. And this is that infamous page he talks about where he's like, he got paid the full page rate for this, for lettering, for inking, for writing. And yeah. for penciling this page. I mean, yeah, he learned that trick from John Byrne with that Alpha Flight issue where it was just yeah, like yeah. pages of white with word balloons. So, and then this. I dude, love this page this so much, great. man. Because, you know, we're calling back to that little, you know, Jean's friend, Annie. Yeah. When she was a child and her powers just came in and we're seeing her timeline through yeah. this sequence of, you know, characters. And then finally, I love this too, where they're all like lined up holding hands. And she's recreated. It like it takes Phoenix seven billion years to recreate the universe, atom by atom. This is half the time it took her the first go round. It's just nuts, dude. She's like, "How long were we gone? Ten minutes?" And that was literally seven billion years. Time was affecting them the way it was actually going. 
I love this too. Them playing baseball. I love. I used to way. love those issues, man. Doesn't that look dope? The way he's throwing the baseball, like the the way he makes the ball, like that effect he has on it, where it, like it's not a round circle anymore. It's like oval. I really dig. Yeah, because it kind of looks like that when you you know like balls kind of do that with gravity. You know, like they kind of. Yeah. It's cool what he decides to put in here. I think it's interesting, like because how do you decide what's important to you, what you want to draw? Um, mm -hmm. it, it's. I think that's also the fun of these books is like knowing that he's doing this and then you're like, okay, cool. What's he going to include? What is he going to choose as an art? What is it him as, like as a cartoonist, he has to draw something he wants to draw. That's interesting for him too. But also like what connected with him as a fan that he wants to include. And that's, what's, what's pretty dope too, is he adds so many different aspects of what makes the X-Men cool. Like you said, you love the issues where they're playing baseball. And that is something that they constantly have. Like, I remember the Jim Lee issues where they're doing it. Yeah, and they're playing basketball. Like even the cartoons did it. Recently. And I love his. I love Beast now in his blue form. This right here too, the fucking yeah, lava great. seeping through. I love just like you said the the moments that he chooses to use. I mean, he had so much. There's so much that happens, and especially in this span of issues, like this is like some of the most most dense storytelling in comics, and he's able to streamline it. It just goes to show you like his understanding of like narrative structure and you know and 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 editing like you got to bring editing skills into this too because you're almost like editing down a big story so like think about it he's writing drawing editing continuity as he goes along like reforming yeah. it it's it's really a lot of work and it took him a few years and you can tell why this was like a labor of love and it probably wasn't easy i mean this probably took a long time for a reason you know they're still experimenting on Gene. Like at this point, they like they still don't know fully what the Phoenix Force is about. Then this panel with fucking Jamie Madrox, dude. Look at that. The face. Fucking crazy, dude. That panel of Xavier looking sort of like Captain John Luke. I was just gonna, I was just gonna say, dude. I'm like, sure that, that's that like a on, weird that was on purpose. That of course purpose. it is. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's like a big trekkie. I I'm I'm happy to see that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of dig. I'm not as like I'm not. A, you're the Star Trek fan of the two of us. I mean, I was like, that's pretty cool that he included that because that that tells me that there is a little part of Eddie P that likes Star Trek, even yeah. though I never heard him talk about it. You know, ah, oh, this this panel too. Speed lines. I love, I love Ed's it. speed lines, man. Dude, they're so good. They're so good. I love this too. How we're seeing like the you know in Jean's mind, we're seeing the split personality come through because we see her have this like kind of like this not a flashback but she looks at her teammates and they look like they're you know from back in like i don't know was it 1600 something like that like time of pirates, yeah colonial 15, times almost, colonial yeah. times yeah and then she looks back and then you can see like the anger and then she like the softness of how her face changes and she looks back at them and at this point professor x isn't on planet he's with the shire and just you know continuing just like the hellfire club uh backstory and before it's going to lead us into the dark phoenix and when she emerges and i really love when he comes to that too it's cool to see the hellfire club like that there's multiple storylines or there was multiple issues where they were this constant threat because i didn't i didn't read any of that so i didn't realize that they it was this like long game that uh claremont was playing before finally leading us into uh the dark phoenix stuff and we see dazzler i love this this introduction of dazzler here dude I love the coloring too. Yeah, I love how how Dazzler has like a punk look with like the studded belts and shit. You know? mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but Eddie P was like he was. I mean, he did hip hop family tree and all that, but he was big on punk rock too, man. Like he talks about it a lot. Like if you go, if you see old pictures of him, he had like his you know his punk the rock face. Sex and... Pistols hair when he was a fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah I and I remember recently. reading somewhere that he used to illustrate like flyers and shit for bands like when he was you know in high I think school he like, also was a huge ramones fan from what i think i saw his yeah. sister post recently and the misfits and danzig yeah. and you yeah. know like all that shit wouldn't that have been cool fuck never mind i don't want to say that a lot because it's probably gonna make you sad but it would have been cool if he did like a uh punk grand design or family tree oh yeah. fuck a punk yeah oh dude yeah bro. i know yeah. i know it would have been dope but we're here for rest extra. in peace <laughs> we're here for, yeah rest yeah. in peace man but I love this too. We're we're get, we're heating. Things are fucking getting crazy here, dude. With the with with what's happening, you know. Like we see all these fucking. These are the what were they called? The hell they're they're from the Hellfire Club, but the, the Hellions. Have, the Hellions, yeah, yeah. Just this massive fucking murder scene. Like 
this um, this definitely was not like that in the actual comics. They were not showing blood like that. No. You know, we were talking about a recent issue of like X Force, and they didn't even let the blood come there when it when like uh, Shatterstar was stabbing somebody. So look at this, and then the dual personality, man. Like it's just like fucking with her head. It really like plays up how much the Phoenix Force was, you know, having an effect on Gene's psyche. Then this Wingard dude that you know we saw Gene kind of like making out with earlier we see this flashback these hallucinations or these hallucinations that she's having we get this little moment with uh, emma frost and cyclops which is kind of funny because they end up having a relationship you know in the 2000s yeah they're in the morrison run yeah. and then we see who's this wingard it's mastermind and cyclops fucking i like the way he just darts up the stairs and then the optic blast or not an opt i'm sorry not optic blast but mastermind is that Mastermind or Gene? No, Gene. Gene shoots this like blasted Cyclops, and then we see the transformation when she's in her Hellfire regalia, dude. And then this. This is what I was wondering. Was he going to show that scene that Byrne does where Wolverine's in the sewer? But we don't get that. We get the aftermath of Wolverine busting through the fucking floor, which I, I think is even better. Again, how he's choosing what to include and how he wants to depict what's been going on. Right. It's almost like he wouldn't be able to top that infamous sequence, you know, with him yeah. in the sewer. So, this is awesome. This that, is just that awesome. sewer, that sewer Wolverine mm -hmm. sequence is like probably one of the the most well known and like it's one of the yeah one of the most iconic Wolverine images I think yeah in Marvel for sure, dude. Fucking Gene, just full blown, full blown evil bitch, you know. I love it, dude. You know, and she's then got like the, the, the yeah. S and M. You know, Claremont likes me. <laughs> Claremont had a king for it, I think, man. He used I, a lot I, of S and I, I think so, yeah. And then we see full-blown Dark Phoenix come in. And look at this, Fuck dude. It. Somehow Mastermind shook loose an unrestricted amount of power inside of Phoenix that she forgot she possessed. One thing supersedes her. Narcotic euphoria. I hunger. No energy on Earth could quench her appetite. So, so fucking good. I love this, too, with the Phoenix Force behind her. She's hovering over... And, and even this, like, they were hoping that Jean Grey wouldn't, you know, be kind of, like, overwhelmed by the evil of what they see in the Phoenix and that her goodness would supersede it, but it doesn't. It's crazy that she killed 13 planets. Look at this, too. Fucking the sequence with Professor X. I love this. Yes, part. dude. And then they, you know, they're able to to free her and make it she's good again, but that's not going to fucking last. You can see this, like, far-off look in her eyes as she's, like, with Scott in bed. He's telling her he loves her and she's like i know but you can tell there's like there's something else going on in her head man now she's back in her old fucking marvel girl outfit this is where she makes her sacrifice and this is this is such a great such a great panel and yeah, then we dude. see you know this is pretty cool too i never i didn't remember this but like the way lalandra creates this orb that has like the essence of her spirit and gives it to her parents i thought that was pretty cool MBC, and then the cocoon. Yep, yeah, the cocoon of, you know, like, she's going to be reborn. And we see uh, young Kitty Pride coming into the mix. I love the, I love these pages where he, like, calls out all those great creators. This fucking Joe Mad piece. Fucking awesome, dude. With the brood, you know? Yeah. I love the brood. I'm a big Aliens fan, and I know, like, that's, you know, there, there's somewhat a uh, take on, on, on the uh, Xenomorph, you know? But yeah, I love their design, and I've always loved love seeing them yeah i loved going through that episode where uh the christmas episode where kitty or, or issue where kitty's being attacked by the brood on christmas eve yeah that's a great one here we go we get uh carol danvers better known as captain marvel now but she was uh miss marvel then and this is how rogue gets her powers this is the introduction yeah. of rogue that'd be a great issue too that avengers angel yeah we got Senator Kelly, big yeah. player in the Methos. Right, and this is where fucking Mystique, uh, you know, she's pretending to be uh, Ms. Marvel, so she's, like, manipulating behind the scenes. We see fucking, uh, fucking dude just gets fucking killed, dude. A puddle of blood. That's what I like that, you know, we can get a little bit more crazy. We can get a little crazier yes. with it because it's not, um, there's no Compass Code Authority anymore at this point so he can go a little bit further than we saw in these original issues oh man i love this dude so he like this is where we see cyclops finds a his name's mad prior so that's why we we, we get this madeline prior persona of gene yeah. as she's coming back 
this is another issue I haven't read before with, with the Doctor Doom. I, I know the cover, like it's embedded in my mind. But yeah, same. I don't think I've read that one either. And we get the brown and tan wolvy costume. I love this dude. Him standing over the Wendigo, looking at, like this again. Look how tiny he looks against this. And that's how he yeah. should always look. He should always look short. Like, you know, with Vindicator right there. Alpha Flight. And him, Professor X, like Carol Danvers, has been in a, you know, a coma because of Rogue, what she's done, you know, taking the powers. Then I, for, I forgot about how much she hated Rogue for the longest time for what she did, you know? And yeah. so that's, that was kind of cool to kind of see this back in here. Oh, dude, this is the this is the this from that issue that I was talking about yeah. with Kitty. I loved that panel. That bird did where she uses the X jet to fucking blast the yeah the brood. That was pretty cool. Again, look at that. That's one issue that he condensed yeah. into one page. Yeah. This is what I. This is the part that confused me here too. I don't know what this is about with these different women, like their heads. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Maybe someone out there in the Washington State. But this, and then this, this interaction between Storm and fucking uh, Doom. Oh, Doctor, so yeah. yeah. I he love draws a really good game. His storm is fantastic, dude. I love yeah. the way he depicts her, like her power, like the way she's like glowing here almost. I love this panel of Doom where his face is just like you know, can't see it with the hood. Like the way his he draws her, uh, Doom's armor. Oh yeah, dude, so good. I love this too. Like you see, like this this weather condition sweep the globe all at once. You see Spidey with his little sp- with his web parachute being <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. dude. I love the little the Spidey cameos. There's a couple of them in here, you know? Then we see Black Panther just making a quick, uh, you know, and he's like, Aurora? And T'Challa, the Black Panther's correct in his assumption about the meteorological situation. He's been with Storm during a claustrophobic panic in the past. So, like, you know, when she's going through, like, some sort of turmoil, like, mentally, that's going to affect her powers and it, like, overtakes the planet. That's pretty crazy, dude. I love this, like, the Kitty Pride's costume, like, super colorful here. Yeah. That, <laughs> I, I don't remember, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, this I is don't the first time I've either. seen it. It's Fucking cool. Magneto right here, too, on this page. Like, that purple magenta that he uses. Taking every nuclear arsenal from the planet and demanding submission or death. For, sometimes I forget, like, how maniacal Magneto really was, you know? Especially during this period, you know? Yeah, I like this fucking forge with Nick Fury. And then here, dude, this is what I was talking about with like Storm. Like she's talking to Carol Danvers and she's like, I might just kill her and no one with or without superpowers will stop me. That's nuts, dude. That's nuts yeah. to hear her talk like that. We learned that this is Scott's dad. We already knew, but we see that like Scott's learning for the first time. I mean, that look in his eyes or look on his face as he realizes his dad, his dad is still alive. And then they get transported back into space. I forget too how much they they had space adventures. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, I mean, it becomes a pretty much a full blown sci fi title, you know. Yeah, I really love the Star Jammers. I wish they would like kind of revisit them, or maybe like, yeah, have some more adventures with X Men in them. I mean, you know, it's it's similar to the Guardians. I mean, you can you can definitely do a take that I think people would respond to. That's what I love about that Brubaker run I was mentioning. Like that was all um, in space. I always think that X Men works better as a sci fi book than a superhero book. They're not, they're, I mean, yes, they're superheroes, but like they work, they work so well in sci fi settings. They do, but I also, I also like, as much as I like that too, I, I also like them better when they are the outcasts. I think that's when they're at yes. their best. Yes. But there's a happy medium you could probably reach within the two. Dude, I love these panels right here, dude. Look at these monsters he's fucking showing. Dude, like, amazing, dude. And then here, like this, like, I don't know what the hell they are, but they're like, again, it's kind of like those vines that he did, but now it's like these weird fucking like tentacle fucking alien yeah, dude, like, Almost like 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 veins or blood, you know, like it's also very weird, much like, body horror. And then Carol Danvers, like learning how much she was a part of the X Men at this point, was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, it, it is crazy. Wait, and you know now that makes sense that like they used the the last Marvel movies the marbles to sort of set up the x-men and the mcu you know like mm-hmm. there there is a pedigree for that connection there again he goes full horror dude like they're fucking yeah, being mutated storm looks like you know she's being mutated then we got cyclops we got fucking colossus with these like arms and shit that he's growing i love it dude 
And then we get uh we see Kitty get Locky, dude, her pet dragon right there in the bottom. Yeah, right bro. That's a big moment too. So weird, you know what I mean? Like like you gotta give it to Claremont to really bring out these like, you know, out of left field ideas and they became so acceptable and just part of the norm. Like when you look at it, this period of X-Men, it was weird. Weird, weird ideas and weird storytelling. Yeah. And you know, weird villains and like it really worked. Like like if anything, the X-Men need, like you said, like the outcasts, they need to be like the weirdo, you know, like almost like a weird surreal sort of vibe to them. Again, look, you have to you have to introduce new mutants at this point too. So he has them just like looking out of the window right here, and then we we meet them really quick here, and then that's it. <laughs> you know, we get right back to you know the, the <laughs> yeah, main yeah. Then we get the fucking the Morlocks, dude. I love, and then the pages just go stark black. Yes, dude. Good call on that. You know, like to emphasize like the the sewer dwelling nature of the Morlocks. Yeah. You know, like again, dude, design sense right there. You know. A subtlety that is going to escape a lot of people, but it does so much to like sort of create this idea that they're underground now. I love the Morlocks too. There's something I don't know en enough about, but I, you know, I, I'm, I know a little. I'm, I, I know enough, but it's, it, I definitely wasn't reading enough of their adventures. Like I like, you know, Marrow comes from the Morlocks. So yeah. I know a lot about her from, you know, because that I was reading a lot of X Men when she was like a part of the team. Again, the way he shows these like these subtle moments. First of all, I love this fucking with Rogue. You see Carol come down, boom, Rogue's shot out of the fucking roof. And then Cyclops right here looking at Gene. The subtlety of the panel. I love this too. Right here, Wolverine. Full fucking like he's out, he's away from the team. He's with Mariko. Who's next? You gotta be you gotta be kidding me because they let Rogue on the team. He's like, what do you go? Fucking have Magneto? Which is kind of funny because Magneto will become a member of the team at some point. Oh, dude, look at this, too. The way that he does that bullet hitting Rogue in the screen. I love it. And then the and then, little vibranium bullets thing, you know? Dude, this, too. Then Wolverine, like, as much as he was against her, what does he do? He fucking gives her his healing power. Amazing. It just shows, like, it, it. this perfectly encapsulates, like, the full gamut of Wolverine as a character to me. Like, he can be so Very rough, much so. but then so much heart. Look at that! Look at that bitch slap. That you know, that's the that I I feel like that's a play on the meme, dude. The oh Batman yeah, dude. Slapping Robin. Yes, for sure it is. Yeah, good call. For sure it is. And finally, you know, Cyclops is like, are you the reincarnation? Are you Phoenix? And then boom, oh shit, that is who it is. You know, and then the the transformation of Dark Phoenix back to Madeline. You know, and don't you dare compare me to her ever again. You talked about the, the X Men ninety seven. This has kind of been touched upon. This specific stuff, right? Like, yeah. Was he? Did he marry Jean? Did he marry Madeline Pryor? What? How? When were they switched? When? When did all that happen? You know. And so it's it's kind of cool that like, as we're watching that cartoon recently, like we're I we're seeing some of that play out here. Just such a great book, dude. You know, I can't say it yeah. enough. Yeah, dude. It's one of my favorite things ever in comics. To, to be honest with you. And uh, I, I thought it was so original and, like, so exciting. And I think it brought a lot of people into comics. I mean, it brought me back into it, kind of. I was, like I said, like, you know, I was kind of lapsed for a while. And then my buddy, Lewis, like, had been like, hey, man, there's this artist at Piscor. And I'm like, yeah, I think, you know, it's a guy that does a, I was tangibly, you know, like, like familiar with the, the, the stuff on Boing Boing. But when I got these these single issues, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Dude, how about this fucking Sarah Connor looking panel right here? Fuck yeah, good call, bro. So dope. And that's what's crazy is like, we've already called out multiple things that definitely are call outs to other inspirations to Ed. Yeah. And I think that's, that that too is pretty awesome that he includes all that stuff. And then this yeah. right here with Storm and Rogue and the fucking like, the, the depiction of them flying through the air, Forge knocking fucking this dude out of the way and then we get this blast with like the it's behind the other panels are overlapping but we just yeah. see all this fucking energy like hitting storm and then we wrap up dude and this is yeah. going to this takes us into life death i believe uh this yeah feels like that's where these issues head but i love mohawk storm i'm you know and then the relationship between her and forge again there's they're, they're did this in the in one of the new episodes of X-Men 97, they did, they adapted yeah. Life Death. So, 
and then we Which get pretty you know, awesome. We'll talk. We'll, we'll uh, talk about this one. Um, do its own episode. I wouldn't mind using this as the catalyst to talk about a uh, giant size X Men because I love the coloring on it. So much like we discussed, maybe doing X Men one. Uh, I would love to do this. Um, in the future, we get this pinup by McFarlane, also. But such a great fucking book. I can't say how much I love these books, man. And it's been so good to to reread them. It's been a little while. It's been a couple of years since I read them. So excited to go into book three. But for everybody uh, listening, watching, head to your shop. I don't know if these treasury editions are available anymore, but you know they got the. Treasury. I think they're out of print. Yeah. You know what's crazy is I found a bunch of them. Books a million for like three ninety seven ones. No matter how you read it, it's a great read. It's some of the best X Men comic books of the last, I'll say it, last thirty years. And um, if you can get the Treasury, well worth the money if you can find them. So go pick them up. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, we're out.